Jones. Roswell Flight Test Crew here. Please subscribe now before you forget or change your mind. Today we're going to be taking a look at the unique Typhoon Q500 Plus quadcopter. We saw the Q500 Plus for the first time at NAB earlier this year and they set up on the checkout. <laughs> Now let's see what's inside the box. Let's see. Okay, first we have, looks like we have cardboard. And we have paperwork, and manual, manual. Oh, no before you fly. Very good. Looks like quick guide, quick user guides. Really handy to keep in the field with you, perhaps. Warnings. And we now have accessories. Let's see this uh, SD card in this box. Looks a little big for an SD card, so let's find out what else is in here. Um, this is for the motor to mount your propellers. It holds the motor in place. Uh, this is a radio strap. Here we have a spare component. It's actually the little device which holds the door shut for the battery door. They give you a little bolt, a little wrench to put in there. Here we have a balance connector for charging. A USB cable. Here's the SD card. Uh, we have tweezers for tweezing things. We have, what is this? SD card reader. Ah, USB gimbal adapter interface. Aha, for the gimbal. And we have keys. Okay. And on the next thing in the box here is we have propellers. Great, we have two, we have four, we have more than four, six, lots of propellers, eight propellers. So they, they anticipate people learning how to fly, I suppose. And let's see, next here is, oh, this is a little sunshade. Let me just take this off of here for the screen, it unfolds and suction cups onto the, onto the radio. So, put that aside. And now onto the aircraft. And the aircraft itself. So complete with shipping tape and everything. Here we go. So there's the actual aircraft and gimbal attached. It's got the gimbal retention mechanism there for shipping. That's very handy. It's got little uh, things on top of here to tell you how the propellers attach. It's a warning about the propellers. Keep clear of them and remove these little things before flight. Okay, put that aside. And what else do we have in here? We have, okay, we have the charger and another balance lead. So they give you a spare. That's pretty handy actually. And this is the AC portion of the charger. And I bet you there's another thing in here somewhere. This requires power. And this, this is the battery right here. It's actually quite a nice one. It's 5,400 milliamp. So that's, that's a pretty beefy battery. It doesn't weigh a lot either. It's quite nice. So that's pretty handy with a little handle there. And standard leads at the bottom so you can charge it with a normal charger if you want to. You don't have to use this. That's pretty handy. And a USB charger for the radio. Pretty handy. Okay, and we have... Oh, there's the cable for the main charger. And last but certainly not least, oh, actually, second to last, is the radio itself. Now, this is quite a radio. It feels nice, it's heavy, it's got all the buttons is what you might want. You put that aside. And now, okay, now, last but not least, this, besides looking at some kind of space age phaser, is a option to take the gimbal off of the aircraft and put it on here. You put a smartphone here, and then we could use it as a handheld gimbal. It's pretty cool. Now let's take a closer look at the radio. So what we have here, take off this little plastic bit, is essentially what amounts to a radio with a built-in Android tablet. 
which this screen here, pretty large screen actually, shows you your camera view, shows information about the aircraft, the battery, the height, uh, home direction, the current operating mode. It's actually pretty cool because you've got everything needed right there to operate the aircraft and do the camera work. Um, on the radio also, a few switches here, like this one here, for example, controls the angle of the camera. Um, over here, a, a, a very unique feature is, this is turtle and rabbit. That controls how fast the aircraft goes. You wanna get a nice, slow, sweeping shot, you just dial back the speed a bit, and you're good to go. So it's like adding expo, it's pretty, pretty cool the way it works. So, here we have our flight mode switch. We have our smart mode, which is the follow me slash stay at a certain fixed distance from the, air, from the aircraft radio. The radio has a built-in GPS, so does the aircraft. So the GPS at all times knows where you are and where the aircraft is, and it can coordinate the two for the following mode. The angle mode is like normal flight. It's just basically fly around normally, and it'll GPS hold when you stop. And of course, the home mode, return to home. Pretty simple. It'll ascend to 10 meters, come back, and land. Other buttons on the radio here are these two up here. Uh, take picture, take video. Pretty simple. You just tap your picture, takes a photograph. Hit video, it starts the video recording, hit again stop. This right here is your start and stop button for the aircraft itself. When you have the air aircraft ready to fly, you press and hold this, it'll arm and start the propellers for you. And same when landing. You land the aircraft, press and hold again, stops the aircraft. Pretty simple. Now let's turn it on and take a closer look at the radio. First I'll check and see what kind of battery it takes. And oh, hey, it takes a lithium ion and it's already installed. That's pretty handy. I was hoping not for, to find double A's in there. So that's great. And that means it'll turn on. Perfect. Now the aircraft's currently off, so it will complain about that, I'm sure, but there's our power up. Well, now that the radio's on, I want to give us something to talk to. So let's power up the aircraft. First, I want to remove the packing tape and the re little plastic thing from the gimbal because you don't want to power the aircraft up with the gimbal of restraint. It's bad for it. Okay, there's a little plastic retention clamp. Let's put that aside. Insert the battery in the back here. So just press and just slides in and click, close the door. And the power switch is actually right on the bottom here, right below the battery plugs in. So I'm going to flip that, put it up right quick, and it should power up. And let's see what the radio does. Okay, there we go. The radio has acknowledged that the uh, aircraft is ready. It says something with the SD card there. So I want to put an SD card in the camera, which I don't have handy. So I said, okay. And there we are. There's the camera's view. Perfect. Okay, so on the screen here, we have our flight mode. We have our GPS is ready. We have satellites on the aircraft here, position of the aircraft there. So over here, we have our aircraft voltage, altitude, GPS speed, distance. On the very top here, next to the time, we actually have our satellites for the radio. So our radio has eight satellites in this case. We have our link quality next to that, of course, battery for the radio next to that. So on the bottom here, we have system settings, flight settings, and model selects. Another unique feature we discovered actually playing with the little gimbal controller is the software. It's compatible with an iOS device, like a tablet. It's really great. And of course, the screen is live on both units at the same time. So you could have like a director or a secondary person watching this with the aircraft flying or just use it with the gimbal. It doesn't have to be attached. It's pretty cool, actually. Okay, now let's go flying. But how are we going to get all this stuff to the field? How about this custom cut foam case from Go Professional Cases? Wow, that was timely. Yeah. Okay, so here we are in the field. Let's take her up and see how she performs. This is actually my first time flying it. Well, it's incredibly stable. One of the easiest to fly aircraft I've ever flown. It's doing exactly what I want it to with no questions asked. It doesn't have a lot of power, but for what the, the application that this aircraft is designed for, that's certainly not a problem. 
just watching you in the air, it's just incredible how smooth it is. And then also, it's it's really quiet. It, yeah. So I'm trying flying a little bit using the live video feed. So there is some amount of latency. And you notice I'm pointing the transmitter at the aircraft. That's something that we've learned is important for maintaining good video transmission. Yeah, the video receiver antenna is apparently right there, right inside that bump on the top. I've got a return to home arrow on my uh, OSD display. I don't know, what are we, 150 feet out? You can't even hear it, I mean, at all. We got a bit of wind picking up, how's it handling? I've noticed a little bit of uh, nudging around by the wind, but it recovers well. Given that I'm flying using the video feed from a gimbal stabilized camera, uh, it's actually very difficult to tell that the wind is, is even <laughs> out there. <laughs> I am certainly not an experienced nose-in flyer, and this, this is the stability of this machine with the GPS hold is enabling me to do this. I would I would not feel comfortable doing this without uh, a flight controller that is this docile. Okay, so you folks at home can see what the video looks like coming off the aircraft. We'll cut in some of that gimbal footage here. So in our testing here, they were saying it was a little docile, very floaty, very nice and calm. You know, I found in the book it says you can disable the GPS. I'm curious how it works in just attitude mode. With the aircraft turned on for the first time, not armed, you pull the stick far to the right, Flick the smart angle switch back and forth, up and down four times. The aircraft will give you an indication. You get some haptic feedback on the radio, plus it says on screen warning you are in manual mode, which is just GPS disabled, of course, which it also indicates on the radio, which is nice. And turning the aircraft off and back on will re-enable GPS. By default, GPS is always enabled when you first boot the aircraft up. You have to disable it each and every time. So let's give it a try. It feels like a normal aircraft at this point without GPS. It flies a lot more authoritatively. It just kind of goes. If I just stick over, the thing just takes off like a shot. This isn't full manual like you'd expect. It's actually attitude mode, which is nice. So it's you can't tip the aircraft over, you can't flip it, but you've lost the GPS so it doesn't stay put. So if I let go of the sticks, just the wind just takes it and carries it away. If you want to get a little bit faster of a shot with the video, you could really come up fast on somebody with this thing. That's that's nice. It's much, much faster. The turtle and rabbit slider still works. It just dampens the inputs. So it's you can't change the angle as much or as fast on, on turtle mode. And actually I'm having a problem keeping it stable in the wind. So back to rabbit mode, we're good to go. All right, so next up, we're gonna test some of the autonomous functions, like the follow me mode. How do we make that work, Degenstein? Well, follow me is just smart mode, actually. Just put the smart mode, it's automatically follow me, because if you move, it moves. Simple as that. All right, take her off and hand me the radio and I'll go run a few laps. not just following him, it's mimicking his movement. So when he moves toward it, it backs off. When he moves away from it, it follows him. And it's just maintaining the same location and distance from him than he was when he first took off and hit the hit smart mode. It's kind of cool, actually. It's maintain distance and altitude. And orientation. And orientation, yes. Yeah, he's gotten on a path now and, uh, and he's pedaling directly into the wind. <laughs> so I think he's, oh look, it's pivoting to keep up it's, with him. It, it's, it's doing it, though, because <laughs> he's changed positions slightly. That's, that's actually awesome. All right, so that was our look at the unique Q500 Plus Typhoon. What'd you guys think? That was a blast. I had so much fun with this thing. <laughs> I can't believe how well the follow me mode worked. Just this last few minutes has really changed my mind about what's possible with follow me mode. The performance of the aircraft really speaks for itself from what we've showed you on this video, but there's a lot of really small touches that were not necessarily apparent while we were taking some of this footage, but that while we were working on and setting up these shots that really stood out. This battery, for example, plugs right in. There's a nice grip handle that you can pull it right out. 
you don't have to flip the aircraft upside down to access the battery. But if you do, when you flip it over, it also disables the gimbal so it's not flopping around. When you put the propellers on, there are little rubber O-rings underneath that help keep them nice and snug yeah. on there. You see how Tekkenstein's holding the aircraft? There's so many handles it's on great. this thing, which is something that's Grippable. glaringly missing from most multi-rotors these days, is a place to pick it's it up. Handle. Yes. <laughs> yeah, no, very formidable aircraft. Now go ahead and click subscribe right now because we're gonna come back and do a second video in detail about the video system, including that cool handheld gimbal it ships with and how you can get the best possible video out of it. Well, hope you're watching. See you next time. All right, fly safe.